Okay, so you may have seen my recent video about the new CPU installed uh, error pop-up screen. And I, in that video I told about my issues with that particular uh, error pop-up on my Rampage 3 Black Edition, which I have used for many years now. And thankfully I, ma I actually managed to solve the problem. And I really have to thank Terraraptor from Hardwarebot as well as Elmore from Elmore Labs for helping me out with this issue by anyways. So uh, first when I noticed the issue I was uh, suspicious about the CPU socket but the socket was pretty much like intact, no bent pins whatsoever. I cleaned the socket thoroughly multiple times even uh, the area around the CPU socket and so on. Then I tried both of the BIOS chips, I reflashed the BIOS, I flashed another version on the backup bus and so on, but nothing helped. I tried many different CPUs, but it was always the same. When I was asking around from like Elmer, Terraptor, other guys in the hardware bot discord, in the hardware repair section, some people were already like, uh, they, were, they quickly started to uh, think about the socket occupied pin, which is the famous pin. If you have watched my uh, uh, Coffee Lake in Z170 or Z270 uh, motherboard uh, like modding uh, videos. So uh, there's, a, there's a socket occupied pin in the uh, uh, LGA1366 socket and it's connected, well technically it's connect to, connected to this uh, Super IO chip over here. So this is pretty much the same I see as those Nuvoton chips like on the Z170M OC formula, Maximus 9 uh, formula, Apex and so on. There's actually no, uh, there's no pin, there's no socket occupied pin on the chip itself, which was kind of weird. The, the first pin over here in this line is a CPU remove pin. And uh, there's one transistor between the socket occupied pin and the uh, a CPU remove pin over here and the socket occupied pin is still connected to uh, I think it's connect to, connected to this uh, resistor and this tiny capacitor over here so uh, with the help of the other guys who are whom I already mentioned I we used the uh, board layout uh, view program or, or for the Rampage 3 Black Edition and uh, we thought about could this tiny free leg MOSFET or NFET or how's it called over here be damaged. So uh, I'll show you the uh, schematic view of the uh, component but anyway so the pin number one over here is the socket occupied pin, pin number two is a crown pin and the third pin the uh, middle leg one the, or the middle leg is the uh, uh, CPU remove pin that connects to the uh, Super IO chip. We thought that could this particular uh, tiny NFET be damaged, like does it uh, accidentally uh, trigger the CPU remove thingy and then cause the error pop-up screen? Don't know. So first, with the help of Terraptor or after the rec after recommendation by Terraptor, I first tried to short the uh, socket occupied pin to uh, ground, it didn't help. So then well, we tried to uh, remove the whole uh, MOSFET itself. I actually have it over here. It's quite tiny, so hold on. So it's this one over here. You can see it has been uh, removed pretty much completely with a hot air soldering station, which you can see over here. So uh, now it's gone. And after that, it actually worked. The motherboard worked for a brief moment. I could uh, run like a CPU and overclock it just like normal. But then for some reason it came back once again. So I thought like what's going on. The battery, the stock battery that I had was uh, bad. It didn't have high enough voltage anymore, but that's not the case. I even swapped a new battery in, but you can actually run motherboard without any battery at all. You just need to clear the CMOS after you turn on the power supply the AC switch. So you need to uh, just clear the uh, CMOS once after you uh, turn on the uh, uh, power for the motherboard and for the system. 
So then, as uh, that didn't work anymore, I thought like, what, what should I do? So after that point, I worked on my own. I first tried to remove this uh, tiny, like uh, one mega ohm resistor over here that uh, connects. The other side of the resistor is uh, CPU remove and the other side is uh, 3 volts coming from the battery. I thought like, is this like a tiny resistor that connects the uh, CPU remove pin to the other points on the board as the CPU remove pin is connected over here in the first pin in this row in the Super IO chip as well as the third leg from this row over here when counted from this part or from this side uh, in the uh, on this uh, like is this like a buck converter I don't know but the socket the CPU remove pin is uh, in various spots around this board it's even uh, uh, present near the memory memory slots as well so then what I tried because the way I understand the CPU remove function is that I think it's some kind of a, some kind of like a safety feature so uh, it's only there so if you let's say uh, if you have some overclock settings, you remove the CPU, you put another CPU in, the CPU remove function is like a safety feature so that you don't accidentally uh, apply the same settings immediately on the new CPU. So uh, that's why I think there's like a safety feature that triggers the new, C new CPU install thingy as it always loads everything. Uh, at stock, like every settings at stock, or it loads or it loads just the default values. So we obviously we don't need that safety feature. So then what I tried was that I actually thought about doing like I thought about lifting the entire pin from this Super IO chip. So technically like cutting it or removing it, and that actually seemed to work. So I just used a standard. A soldering iron, I used uh, the soldering iron in my left hand and then I just put these tweezers in and then I just pushed the pin up when I was heating the uh, this particular pin with the soldering iron and it worked just fine. Now it's currently sitting in open air, I need to put some electrical tape or something uh, so that it doesn't accidentally uh, touch the pad anymore or cause a short by touching any other any other of the pins. So that actually works, so now I was able to uh, run multiple different CPUs and overclock them just like normal. So I'm damn happy because I really like this board, I really want to keep using it, so uh, I think the outcome is pretty alright. Of course I will be showing you the uh, motherboard in action so that you can be sure that I'm not lying, but uh, that's pretty much it. So I think this fix is applicable on other motherboard models as well. So if you have, let's say, like this board or a similar board, you need to check the Super IO chip and is there like a CPU remove pin function. And by lifting that particular pin, you should be able to get rid of the whole error pop-up completely. So yeah, so from here I will just set up the motherboard in my test bench and let's see if we can actually turn on this board like normally and if we can actually uh, run some overclock settings. Okay and now the moment of truth. So the board has been set up with a 930 CPU, three sticks of memory so all of the memory channels are running, simple graphics card, both 8 pins plus the 24 pin, CPU fan error. Now I will just go to, I will load my water overclocking profile so uh, put two, 21 times 200, so 4.3 for stars memory and uh, uncore relatively easy and uh, memory I will put 1.78 1 1.45 1.35 V core so those are the settings load line QPI load line enabled LN2 mode disabled and let me show you it will work. Oh, so when you see like 68 quickly, that means it's at least loading or trying to load overclocking settings. So quite a long D5, 13. We don't want to see 85 or 87 after 78. So 75, 78. We want zero zero and then AA. So seventy eight C zero zero. 
now it will yeah AA Windows XP Over here we are in the operating system so four free on the CPU memory 1640 so yeah so it does work so uh, definitely try this if you have the similar motherboard the same motherboard or similar one that has this very same issue it needs a bit of skill especially the uh, I've been lifting the pin but it was definitely worth it this motherboard is very very good it can do very high base clock good memories and so on I really have like uh, a lot of feelings for this board I don't want to lose it I want to see it like keeping going and going and going I really want to uh, do a lot more like overclocking with this board so damn awesome to get it back up and running so yeah so hope this video helped you out I really hope you like to see like content like this like repairing hardware and fixing very uh, weird like uh, motherboard and hardware related issues so uh, thumbs up this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel and yeah thanks for watching once again and i will see you on the next one